again, postcard. And, um, well, it's gone cooler, so we sat by the fire. And um, I'd be, it's only going to be about 22 degrees today, isn't it? I'm frozen. Uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, you're a bit nesh, aren't you? Oh, that's a good yeah. northern word. It's Explain what nesh. that is. I've no idea. I've just heard my mother say it. And all, the, all, all the old ladies in the north of England say it. Like, hey, you're a bit nesh, aren't you? Yeah, and you go, oh, I don't know what it means. What, what does it mean? Cold? Yeah. Nesh? Yeah, yeah, and you're a bit soft. I am not a bit <laughs> soft. <laughs> Very soft. <laughs> well, listen, COP26, eventually... Yeah. Actually, it's supposed to be the last day today, mm. as we speak, but it's going to carry on behind yeah. closed doors, mm. which is where everything has gone yeah. on, really. Yeah. On the COP. Now, they've had, well, this is the 26th, and nothing seems to have happened since the 25th in Paris, uh, and uh, they're still talking about it. But people are sussing it out. But breaking news, I don't know whether you picked this up on your way here, sir... Uh, but there was a big demonstration inside the hall by the official delegates. It was a riot. It was a march inside the hall mm. because they they not got what they wanted. They wanted everybody definitely dying in another mm. ten years, uh, and the 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 uh, <clears throat> head banging, head sticking to the M25 extremists were part of the group, mm. and it wasn't good enough for them. Why are we listening to people like this, Lee? Have we not any common sense ourselves? Well, we've, we've always listened to people like this. Um, you know, you go right back to Emily Pancake, or whatever she was called. <laughs> she, um, you know, she was... There, there have always been riots. It's why we have... Or riots or demonstrations. Which is why we have um, the Speaker's Corner and all these elements all out throughout the world. Um, we have a democratic right to express ourselves in a way which can seem to be damaging towards the functioning of society. It's a way of stopping society in its path. And that's, that's what's happened. Now, the problem we have today, which I know what you're, you're referring to, is that it used to be the grounds or it used to be the areas of contention for students, for hippies, for uh, working class people who had the right to withdraw the labour and march down the street, the pulsal marches or whatever they're called, all these kinds of things that have gone on now. It's the people who got fed up with watching Everdale and watching Coronation Street and uh, watching things like, no, let's go out and have a protest, dear. What should we do? We'll glue our heads to the M25. That'll upset everybody. Yeah. And it's all because I've got no loft insulation. Well, absolutely pathetic. Now they take no the COP26. Well, they should all be arrested. Absolutely ludicrous. COP26, just like all the other cops, is a good thing because it's a ground for looking at things and saying, can we do anything about this? Yeah, China said that uh, we, they'll go off with America and do it in private. Well, <laughs> think about that. And um, well, that's what is going to happen, of course. Yeah. China was a part of this. Mm. It's just uh, Chief China Jinping decided not to come and... Pity it didn't happen to Joe, Uncle Joe Biden. I know he'd have fallen asleep, but, though. Yeah, but it's like everything you uh, talk about in Europe, it's all behind closed doors. Yeah. And uh, it came out also, there's no windows. So there they were, all catching COVID from COP. Yeah. And yeah. Um, Copping COVID. Yeah, as well. Yeah. Could be called a pub, that, couldn't it? A pub? <laughs> <laughs> no, it couldn't. Don't get him going on pubs. Yeah. He's an expert. I know. So... Well, I say he's an expert. He's on the fizzy, non-alcoholic. Uh -huh. Since he came to Spain, he's had fizz and non and he can't uh -huh. take more than three. I know, crazy, isn't it? It's really bad. I have to admit, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and anybody else who's listening, I've drunk that much in my life, I've spoiled it for myself, and I've had to give up for six months. So, but what I'm saying, look, is this non-alcoholic larder. What? No, you I like it, you like it. I said I'd had alcoholic larder. Oh. See, it's affecting my brain. Yeah. 
and uh, no, non-alcoholic beer. It's better because I hate lager. But I will, I am going to do a video, probably tonight or within the next few days, about the iniquities of how people who can no longer drink are treated by the non-alcoholic medicine which is being served by Barman and you're being ripped off. Uh, yes, it's, they've always ripped us off with a glass of water, haven't they? Let's be honest. That's a very good point, but it's not as bad as this. Do you, right, okay, he's done it, not me, right? It costs you about four euros for a pack of six of little, stupid little bottles, that right. big. Yeah? Pack of six, four euros, divide four by six. I can't do it because my brain's gone. Whatever that were. How oh, is six into four? Uh, yes. <laughs> so anyway, it's about 38, isn't it? 38, something like that. Six into four is ju it's under a euro a bottle anyway. Let's it's, make it easy for I've ourselves. I've just done it. It's more than 50. Yes. That's anyway, so right. And they charge two pound two euros fifty for a mm. bottle of it. Yeah. Now that is a con. The glorious Andrea who's sitting there in a bit of a drunken stupor over there, um, is actually uh, worked it out that it costs more to buy non alcoholic lard because you're very ill. You're very ill because you've been drinking too much and you've made yourself poorly. Right? It costs you more to buy non-alcoholic lager so you get well again, right? Yes. Yeah, than it does to buy a bottle of gin mm. over the bar. It's a rip-off. The not in it. glorious Andrea is watching this, bless her. Mm. Oh, she and won't look now. It, it's, it's the only time you can get your own back. Yeah, it is, that's and right. You come yeah, out with yeah. brave statements, yeah, don't you? You're right, not like yeah. this normally. No, like, like him. Like him, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> with, with his uh, camera assistant. Yeah, yeah, he's there. Uh, he's here being watched. I'd tell him, he's like, oh, darling, oh, no, well, that light's gone up a bit there. You'll have to check that. Can you check that one over there? Can you go and check that one over the other side of the swimming pool? And that one in Portugal? And don't be long. Don't yeah, be long. Really? <laughs> Right, we, we're going to agree on this. You cannot get the staff. No. <laughs> Just get it with the staff. Yes, yes. that's it. We, we will move on from cops. Because we'll move on really, from, everybody's yeah. fed up with it. Yes, they are. And they've been sussed. Have they? Oh, yes, they've been sussed, all these mad people that are going overboard <laughs> on climate. I'm sorry if you go into the maths. It does not exist in the short term, whatever they tell you. And even in the long term... Mother Earth is good. She'll see it's all right. We've just got to be sensible. We've not got to go mad. One thing we've always mentioned is plastic bottles. Get rid yeah, of them. Exactly. I've just had a brilliant thought. Go on. Now think about this. He has no idea what I'm talking about. But this is actually quite, quite incredible. Glacier mints. Right. Oh, that's there are other back. mints that are available. Yeah. yeah. See, I keep working so this camera. Now. Yes. Yeah, it's probably that one I'm supposed to be doing it. <laughs> Glacier mints. Yes. Right. Now they predicted, if you think about it, global warming. Go on. You've lost me now. What does the polar bear stand on on the front of the packet? A block of ice. A block of ice. Now you get because of global warming. All these polar bears floating around on blocks of ice. Yeah. But he doesn't stand on a block of ice, he stands on the block of sweet. Gibbly looks, like looks like a block of ice, it represents, that's why it's called a glacier. Oh. So they predicted it 200 years ago mm. and we're still ignoring it. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> stick to refreshers. You remember refreshers, don't you? I do. Yeah. There you go. And uh, we're going to go on to, uh, well, my favourite lady, as is, is, is well known, uh, has done it again. And she's done it twice. Do you mean your camera assistant? Or, no, not the no. camera assistant. This mm. is the lovely Nicola. Yeah. And um, actually, she's done a lot. One of the things is she refuses to be interviewed by GB News. Now, mm. we, we've sung mm. the praise of GB News. They don't get it all right all the time, but mm, they give you another alternative. Mm. And she won't be interviewed by them. Yeah. Why? Well, they, they've spoken the truth about her and they've had a go. Well, yeah. As we've had a go on several mm. occasions and still having a go. Uh, but she's gone again completely over the top. She's actually said, uh, and other people, I must admit, that women are more affected by climate change than men. Right. Why, Nicola? 
Oh, well, um, she gave a, a string of absolutely irrelevant responses. <laughs> that the, the, the women are at home looking after things and they're more worried being at home. It's bilge. Now, I'll tell you why it's bilge and even double bilge and even triple bilge. Mm -hmm. If you notice, and even on GB News, the fact is every day is a new day yeah. for theme of the day. Yeah. You know, it's poppy day or whatever. Yeah. But it's Women's Day every single day, practically. It's, don't ask me why, but it is. Uh, it's women that have been abused. Well, we do a long series on that, and that's so important. So, mm. well, that's good. Then it's Women's Menopause Day. I thought when I was watching this, I bet Lee's interested in this. Mm. Um, us fellas apparently have a male menopause. He's still in it. I've recovered. Um, <laughs> But it's so women orientated these special days. Yeah. There's no men. There's no man's days. There's never been a man's day. No, Sky no. News are even more guilty of this. Mm. Why is there no man's days? Well, it's, it's, it, again, it's a historical thing. I've I've actually campaigned about this. I've got myself in a lot of trouble uh, by saying that we need a man's day. Uh, it's. On a serious point, I don't understand why there is a minister for, for families within the government, why there is a minister for women, and yet there's no minister for men. Now, it's basically because we are the hunter-gatherers. Uh, and um, what, in my case, I've gathered ex-wives. And that means that um, I, I am therefore responsible for uh, all these ex-wives, etc. Now, is that really fair? Are we not grown-ups? Are we not equals? Are we not capable of doing the same work? Are we not capable of doing the same things in this world? And yet, it all comes down to the fact <clears throat> that men are responsible for everything. We're responsible for everything, Rodney. You know, I, I can cook. I can sew. I can make flowers grow. I can do all sorts of things like that. And so can uh, my glorious uh, wife. Yeah. But I can also change the oil on the car. I can change a wheel. Yeah. I can do, uh, I can go and build a fence. Andrea can't and has no intention of doing it. Where's the equality in that, I ask you? And if we had a minister for men, maybe that would balance things out. Yes, we are the demigrated uh, uh, species on this earth. Well, do we care? Is that the real reason? That do we make up? Because do we don't forget, for daytime television, especially, it's the ladies that tend to watch it. I thought they're all out working now. <laughs> oh dear! Well, you, we're going to get kicked off telly, aren't we? Yeah. I Again. better carry on with this. But yes, basically, you're right. The Daily Mail, which is called the Daily Mail. Instead of the yeah. Daily Female, which it should really be called. Which it has a section inside, and it was the first one. Good, good, good to their, power, more power to their elbow. They started uh, the female section, yeah. uh, spelled F-E-M-A-I-L, so they yeah. spelled it wrong. Uh, then you have The Sun. Uh, they have a female section. Now, when all these newspapers... Page three are, are we talking about now? No, that's terrible. You should be taken off air and I should just be left. Yeah, it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's... It, when I was, I was in the, uh, the vanguard of a lot of things within, newspaper, within the newspaper industry, and when newspapers realised that, that actually women were the neglected audience... Uh, that they were male oriented because of page three, because of soccer, because of this kind of thing. That's when actually, and this is a terrible thing to say as well, they, they started to put celebrity in newspapers because mm. that was a female mm. thing. Mm. When that came out, when they first started to make uh, females an important form of the read or part of the readership, I thought it was brilliant. And I still do. But there has to be a point where men are treated as equal, equal human beings. There is a, something called the men's movement. They've approached me on dozens of occasions to write something about them. And at one stage, I wanted to do it, but I read their misogynistic, their female-hating, pompous stupidity uh, that I wouldn't touch them with a barge bill. Sorry, men's movement, that's what you are, you load of idiots. And... Um, 
So we, well, it encourages going at OTT, doesn't it? This sort of bias, yeah. if you wish. Yeah, of course. So it I will. tell you what, we're talking about newspapers. I think they've let themselves down in a number of ways very <sighs> recently. Listen, we're not talking about holy writ. You think everything's written in a newspaper? It's holy, and they've got it right. No, they haven't. I'll tell you one thing: they've not got right. You're really going to love this, and that's the illegal, illegal notice immigrants that are coming across. A thousand yesterday, mm. three times mm. as much as last year. Nothing's done, and not one newspaper except one yesterday, and none the day before. The one was page two of the mm. Telegraph. Never mentioned it. Why? Simply because newspapers are interested in fear, frightening people, bad news, because nobody likes good news. We've got to be mm. on the fear factor. Mm. Or are people getting fed up of immigrants coming over it's not news mm. well you could level that against cop 26 mm. if ever you could why aren't they mentioning real problems and why aren't the government doing anything about it it's horrendously the the propaganda that nigel farage puts out now on um uh, this new television gb news yeah, yeah. G gb news i wasn't even going to mention it um, is as trustworthy and factually ridden uh, poppycock and boulder dash as he's always thought throughout his career. Well, why are they lifeboat men saying we're yeah, well, taking in 30, 50 yeah, people at a time and there were, a thousand yesterday? There were a thousand uh, uh, immigrants came in. Uh, yesterday. Illegal yesterday. immigrants, let's get the right well, thing. Well, if you, yeah, you are illegal until you're vested by, by the... Uh, and then you, you're yeah, safe. Yeah, and yeah. 90% it's gone up from 80%. Yeah, but let's, but let's, get, let's, well, let's, let's approach facts. Nigel Farage made it up, as he always does. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. He's got backed up by Do you know, where, do you know where I read it? Do you know where I read it? Go I read on. it in the Daily Mail this morning. Then I checked the Daily Express. Then I checked the, uh, every single newspaper, apart from one use the story about the thousand uh, immigrants coming across. He made it up, like he always does. No, these are facts, but these are government facts. in the facts. newspapers. It was in every newspaper. He said it wasn't. So it's a factual inaccuracy. It was in no, almost the day news. before. He was on the beep. Well, because it hadn't happened then. No, 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 a thousand. <laughs> on. It was six hundred. And day also, six hundred the day before. And you made the newspapers yeah. because they've gone. I'm no. afraid. Towards the elitist. No, oh, it's no. not our problem. You made you made a point which is absolutely right. Uh, the newspaper industry is based on not regurgitating the same thing over and over and over again. It's based on what actually is uh, is uh, is happening, and um, that is not a happening news story. The one thousand nine hundred immigrants came into Britain last year, and yes, it's it's a big figure that 1,000 came in on one day. But then you have to take into consideration every other fact, which most people don't. First of all, at the moment, uh, Belarus is, being, uh, is pushing uh, immigration and pushing Western Europe to the brink of war. The Russians are already flying um, and nuclear planes over the head of them because the, because Belarus wants to uh, destab destabilize Central Europe, and it's actually flying in from Iran uh, people, then forcing them onto the borders. Now this is forcing other people. Then you have to take into consideration that actually um, out of the uh, uh, number that come here illegally. The majority are actually vetted by the British authorities. And if they are deemed to have no reason to be here, are sent back to their country. They've not sorry, been they... sent back, Lee. They've not been sent because back. It, because if they're from Iran, if Can... they're from where, wherever they're no, from... No, no, no. We're talking about the illegal immigrants. They're not sent back in the last two yeah. years. Zero. Let me tell you another fact that came out oh. yesterday from St. Yeah. Nigel. <laughs> yeah, right. He was up in the northeast. He's where always up the in red wall is and why they voted yeah, he's always up to, there. He to, yes, he's to come out of Europe and they voted mm. to slow down yeah. and stop the illegal immigration. Mm. Let's mm. use the word properly. Mm. And he, and this is fact, There's nothing, nothing where, wrong with where are they going, everybody? He asked mm. the question and then he came up with the answer. 
For every one person that stays in the south of England, 17 come up northeast. They're mm. putting mm. council houses that have got to be emptied. They're put up in hotels, mm. usually four star. Why does 17 go up there and one stay down in the but south? You see, you've got to look at the facts and the reasons that it happens. They, they, they are vested in the first place. They're put up in a hostel. Um, in, they're not. They throw away the passports. They can't be vetted. They do no, it deliberately. They, well, then, they, then what, what do you think they do? They go and work for IBM and get, uh, get no, a nice three-bedroom house. They live off the state. As, uh, go to all it. No, they don't, because they don't exist. They, the they, simple they, fact they get, is, do you know where they, they go? Yeah, they, no, get, they get £37.50 a week, mm -hmm. which... Free, free doctors, free which schooling. Is, well, well, yeah, you can't just let them die on the street. You know, it's, we've moved on a long no, way from that. No, no, of course they can't, but there is but an answer. The, the answer is... First of all, what you do, instead of just attacking illegal immigrants mm. and immigration generally and believing the propaganda rubbish that somebody like the, the burping frog Nigel Farage talks, right? The simple fact, look at why people come across it. It's not for benefits because the majority can't get benefits unless they are proven to be uh, not illegal immigrants. Then they can get it. And most of them work. No, no. They, they get handsome and, pocket and, money. And what? They get 37 pounds. And they don't work week. legally. Yeah. Well, yeah, do you know why they don't work legally? They can't. And, yeah, but who employs them then? There is an answer. Who employs them? Oh, who illegal them? employers. Thank you. So if you remove mm. the illegal employers yeah. who are, and instead of just Looking at people who are coming across in a kayak or a or a pink swan across the sea, rubber duck, right? A rubber duck, yeah, right. Instead of a pink rubber duck, <laughs> then instead of looking at them, look at the people who are willing to take them on and make a fortune out of them mm. and make them live in in terrible accommodation. Look at those people. Get rid of them. Then also oh, well, look yeah, at I, France. I couldn't agree more. But then well. also look at France, who we are paying £54 million to no, no. to stop them coming across. They're quite and, happily and, and, sending and, the well, Of course they are. And, yeah. I, and I don't blame them for one minute. Yeah. They're overrun. Yeah. They should stop, as the United Nations keeps telling us, and they're right. They got the, the first the UN, country. Well done. The, yeah. only, the only thing they've ever yeah. done right is to say a sensible, keep them where they are yeah. as they come over the border, and yeah. we'll pay for them to stay there. Yeah, but we are paying France up personally. Exactly. Me and you. Yeah, I know. Are paying fifty-four million pounds to France mm. to stop. The majority of them and they're across. spending one million on yeah. when when those thousand immigrants came across mm. they stopped i can't remember what the figures are i think it's 58 boats came across no that's wrong my it was in the hundreds of boats came across france for 54 million pounds <coughs> stopped 22. yes now it's it's yeah. appalling yeah and what you, you didn't could've... like france did you when you traveled i across? hate france I think France is... This colours yeah. his opinion about France, but why? Why is not he in France? Nothing happened to me. That exactly nothing happened to me in France. It's the most boring place. Sorry, France, you're boring. Oh. And I like French people. I think French people are very sexy. And also, the men, when they're old and knackered, are still very sexy. The women, when they're old and knackered, aren't. But they are so sophisticated and charming. They smoke well, they smoke their cigarettes perfectly mm. and everything. And, and they just are charming. But France is their most boring country you can ever oh, they be. They are France, by definition. The culture is them. So you've got to be <laughs> criticising them at the same time. All right, yeah, you French people, you're all boring. Yeah, I like well, France, I do, but I tell you what... Is that because you you're boring? Yes. <laughs> when you travelled to the south-east of France, just before we came over to Spain, yeah. I said you'd like it there. Did we like it there? Yes, oh, no, did. I've seen somebody who's locked there, she's asleep again, drunk. Oh, what's well, sort of like She had another bottle of gin. Yeah, she yeah. Wake up, Andrew. Yeah, and, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it was better there. The, the sun was out, obviously. Yeah, it was all right, it was nice there. I liked it when we went over the border and we're actually in Spain. Yes. Because something happened... The problem is, look at any programme on television about France, and you see these beautiful vistas, these beautiful villages. There's no people. 
There's somebody gone yeah. in and bought a baguette and that's yeah. it. Yeah, they shut them up, the villages, day and night, don't they? Yeah, obviously yeah. they won't let the French people, are all the French people of it? Oh, is no. that what it is? They won't let them out no, during the day? They, 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 yeah. th there are lots of reasons. We won't go into that. We're going to talk <laughs> about vaxxing the workers like in our vaxxing, old yeah. people's yeah. homes. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, I'm going to be popular, but never mind. Um, I think it's right that they insist on them being vaxxed. Yeah. Uh, now, there's lots of stories, agendas, yeah. uh, by the anti-vaxxers saying, well, it's now been proved that you don't carry a viral load, um, mm. um, an extra viral load, if you're not vaxxed. The jury's still out. Mm. But the consensus is, it's not as bad as we thought, but you still are more, give more chance to other people catching you from mm. if you've not had a vax. Uh, but the, the danger here, and this is not medical talk, I'm just accepting other people's opinions. When you get a cold, a flu, and the COVID, you may not know it for three or four days, mm. but you're very infectious. Mm. Now that's the real problem. And I'm sorry, I think the anti-vaxxers are very, very selfish. And they're killing old people especially. That's the danger of this disease. It is a wicked disease. Mm. And it's all right to say, oh, only 1%. Uh, people are dying from it. There again, those figures are, are skewed a little mm. bit. Um, but it's all the old people. Mm. Therefore, I think they've ever realised the NHS and other people saying you've got to be vaxxed. But having said that, who else will they now say you've got to be vaxxed? Well, again, yeah, I agree. I couldn't agree. This is, this is a first, right? I am agreeing with you 100% <laughs> on everything that you've said. Yeah, nurses, uh, uh, say 73,000 nurses are apparently going to resign from the NHS because they're being told that they've got to have a double vaccine. Which, yeah, well, if you're going to look after ill people, why aren't you, why don't you think you need to actually be at the height and the best that the world can offer you of, of health to do this kind of thing? You see, you can't, you know, you... I've got bubonic plague. Oh, well, that's it. We've got a good job for you for a nurse here. Oh, I'll have that then. It just doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. Mm. So, yes, health workers, care workers should be vaccinated. Now, by, by them happening, does it move on then to what other frontline workers have you got? Should bus drivers be done? Um, yeah, maybe they should. Which it is proven beyond a doubt, no matter what the anti-vaxxers say, that uh, the vaccination process that we've been through has worked. doesn't mean it's brilliant now. We've got the booster jabs coming in, we've got the tablets coming in that can help uh, people survive this disease and, and to mitigate this disease, to make it less, less dangerous for people. And so we should be going down there. So maybe a frontline worker. What are frontline workers? Dustbin men? There, there can be many yeah. people in yeah. the front line. It's very difficult to get it right. But mm. certainly when you're talking for people up close, treating people absolutely. who are already in a weakened yeah. condition. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, taxi drivers. What about them? Well, um, <laughs> there's not enough of them. Um, and of course, in demanding times as COVID, nobody wants to travel on a packed bus or a train. So mm. there's more demand on the taxi drivers. Mm. But the wretched laws and rules are unbelievable. And taxi drivers are now kicking up big time, and I support them 100% because they have to. Well, it's DVLA in Swansea for a start that mm. stopped working and stopped people getting taxi driving jobs for a start, they wouldn't license them. Do you know as a taxi driver you've got to have the right coloured taxi? You have mm, to have did, up yeah. to three inspections a year, depending on how old your vehicle is. Mm. Now try and do that in Covid times. Mm, mm. And there are so many laws coming out, Lee, as not to be true. Mm. That's the real problem behind the fact that mm. taxi situation is mega. And we've mentioned this on the <clears throat> programme before, but 
years ago, the first bit of interference by the over-government brigade, which we're certainly in now, whichever party it is, it's over-government, was the fact, talking and thinking about old people, of them shutting down all, as an example, the Methodist home, which, which has a great, I don't know, 100-year experience in looking after old people, the best. Mm. Mm. And they shut them down because their rooms are a centimetre short mm. on the dimensions. Mm. How wicked is that? Mm. When you look at stupid laws like that, and they're all shut now, mm. that is awful. Mm. We're being over-government, over-governed, uh, and a lot of people are going the extra mile, of course, and getting this into conspiracy and saying, oh, it's the World Economic Forum. We'll talk about that later or perhaps another day. Uh, and they're saying, we're all going to be controlled. It's 1984. This is just the start of it. Sometimes, even though we're both non-conspiracists, well, you have to think, don't you? Are they right? Of course you do. You should always ex ex examine a conspiracy theory. It'll either make you laugh or frighten you. Yes. Uh, generally, they make you laugh. Uh, but yeah, taxi drivers, you see, you've got to put, again, these things always have to be put into perspective. Um, fewer and fewer people are actually, have actually been going to work. Oh, the, 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 might well have been working from home, but they've not been making that commuter journey. So, particularly in big cities like London, there hasn't been the call for taxi drivers. Uh, also, the cities have been closed down, and no call for taxi drivers. People have not been going to the theatre, the cinema, restaurants, no call for taxi drivers. So, taxi drivers have been getting new jobs. Uh, doing different things like wagon drivers and, uh, and those kinds of people. Good, they should be off the road. Uh, the government shouldn't allow HGVs of that size to be traversing the cities and byways of Britain. But the taxi drivers have been, uh, have been, have had to move on like many other people into different types of employment and that's, that's just the way it is. And there will never be the call to get them back within the next decade, certainly. Um, so, yeah, the restrictions, though, that are put on people who offer that kind of service, yeah, it's petty, it's, it's just not workable, it's expensive, mm -hmm. and drives people away from it. So if you buy your methods of controlling a disease have destroyed somebody's workplace, generally, like they have with taxi drivers and other professions, then you've got to start relaxing the rules to, to bring yes. things back in. Yeah, that, yeah, you hit on it there. Mm. This is the difference between Southern Europe and Northern Europe, mm. especially Britain mm. and Germany. Mm. That's the law, it's right, never mind common mm. sense, mm. you will obey it now. You can do certain things with that sort of philosophy, but they do a lot down here that will say, well, if you pass a law, let's try and get a way around it if needed. Yeah, yeah. And there's a Spanish proverb that says exactly that. Mm. When we first came to Spain, it was just after Franco, and they were still living in fear, <laughs> but rejoicing in their freedom. But when we came to Spain, 51% of the population worked for the government. Mm. You can't have that, it doesn't make sense. You mm. will never run a country. <laughs> yeah, good point. That is mm. banana land. Mm. Everybody works for the government, but what they're producing? Nothing. What are they doing? Stopping other people producing most of the time. <laughs> and it was a nightmare. Mm. Mm. Figures just released from Britain, nowhere near 50%. But a heck of a lot, the biggest percentage ever, are now working for the state. Mm. This is why we've got so much control, so many laws, so many daft laws. And I'll give you an example. As you know, we'll tell the viewer, we've just sold our house in the UK. Mm. Right. I didn't know what you had to do and how bureaucracy have got in the way. I've had to fill in that many forms that you could have done because you've got some legal experience in conveyancing, so have I because I've been involved in house purchase for many years. 
And you have to film forms. And some of the forms say, um, are you taking the light switches with you? I've seen this, yeah, yeah. And it goes on and on for 50 pages. I know. What a load of rubbish. What are you going to do if you take yeah. a light switch? Are you going to sue them? No. I know, it is. Talk it's, about yeah. it and then you get a bill from the lawyer of two to three grand. <laughs> and you could have done it yourself yeah. for two to three pounds. Yeah. Come on, what is going on? The lawyers are making, they're having a laugh lead. Of course they are, of course they are. Uh, we're in the process of um, uh, having some uh, legal work carried out for us. I don't want to go into it too much. Uh, at the moment, nothing because there's nothing nefarious about it, nothing embarrassing. That makes it's a just, change. I know, I, that's it, stop drinking, that's it, your whole life just changes, you don't do anything wrong, nothing funny happens You're looking anymore. well, lad. That's very kind of you, yeah, it's, it's not drinking, you know, <laughs> it's not drinking that alcohol thing, yeah. Well, yeah, nothing funny happens anymore. Um, but anyway, so yeah, we, we, we've we involved with lawyers over a, over a project that uh, we're involved in. And the amount of work that we're having to do, where we're having to make Zoom meetings, not because the lawyers want to talk, not because they want to see my happy smiling face or Andrea's happy drunken face. Uh, only see <laughs> he's jealous, Andrea. He's jealous. <laughs> um, it's because we've got to prove our identity. And the reason we can't prove our identity is because we can't go into their office because of COVID. Yep. Crazy, absolute craziness. It is a ludicrous world. But the money that's hand being turned over, hand yes. held fist. Yes. And carrying on from there, we're talking about money. Mm. And okay, mm. uh, we've got some good money from our house, which mm. is now going to have to pay our two mortgages. <laughs> but then, never mind the facts yeah, of yeah. that. But in the meantime, before paying them off, we have to make sure that they're distributed amongst banks. Mm. Mm. Why? Not mm. your banks, mm. banks in general. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason is, of course, you're only guaranteed if a bank goes bump. 89,000. 85,000, yeah, enough. You know. Nine, 89. Is it? Just for fact. Yes, oh. it's 89. They've told me 85, but never mind. It's oh, it's changed then. It's possibly, it's 100,000 euros in Europe. Mm. And that is in sterling, anyway. Um, and they will guarantee it. Now, you try and open a bank account in Britain, it's blooming difficult. Mm. They want blood tests, inside leg measurements. You mention it, they want it, and you can't get it. <laughs> try and do it from abroad, mm. it's practically impossible. And it's all nonsense. And it's great for the crooks because they know how to forge forms, yeah. to forge passports, and it makes it easy for them and everybody else is stunned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I and I know you are fed up for phoning. You're on the phone, on a mobile phone, mm -hmm. from Europe, cost you fortune. Mm -hmm. And you're speaking, and you're waiting, and listening to music, mm -hmm. and you give up. Yeah. And you phone them five or six times, and you can't hear them. No. Can you speak up? Oh, no, that doesn't help. Why? They're all on headsets. Mm -hmm. Cheap ones. You can't understand <laughs> what they're saying. And nobody knows what they're doing. Mm. One person gives you one answer, the other person, are you working for home? As if you didn't know, the dog's barking, the yeah. kid's, kid's screaming. Crying. Yeah. So, you know. The telly's blaring. The telly's blaring. Bla and they like it. Oh, I'm blooming sure they like sure, it. Sure, they do. They work in their own hours. They're like self-employed, yeah. but they're getting paid without yeah. worry. Yeah. No, it should be stopped. And these employers, and it started in America, it's mm. coming to Britain, that mm. pay them 20% less until they get back to work, then we'll pay mm. you the full wage. Mm. I think that's too generous. They should be paid a lot less. <laughs> if you cannot deal, I'm afraid, you've yeah. got to be in an office to somebody to look after you and give you the right answers. Mm. I've had so many fairy tales, so many yeah. lies and fibs, because mm. they don't know. Stop this homeworking. Yeah. Unless you're a mum and does the best job in the world, stay at home to look after your family, that's brilliant, mm. but when you're not, get back to work and mm. inter with everybody. Let me tell you a very brief story about, uh, should I name the bank? Yeah, it's the HSBC in Newport, Shropshire. You don't like them, do you? No. Well, they do, I like them, I think they're very nice people. I think, it, and it's a nice little building, and it's, 
it's got all my money inside it. But it's like, yeah, but I genuinely went in that bank um, a few years ago now, so the people I'm talking about are not there, and I'd been banking there for 25 years, and as I walked in the bank, the lady behind the counter said, hello, Mr. Banks, how are you today? I said, I'm fine, thank you. I said, um, I've got a cheque for whatever it was, uh, can I uh, put this in? And she said, yes, of course you can. And how's Andrea, and how's the children, how's the dog, etc., etc. Uh, I said, they're fine. And uh, she said, have you any proof of identity? And I said, in a jocular fashion, yes, you, ha <laughs> ha, like that. And she said, no, have you got your passport or a driving licence or anything like that? I said, no, why? She said, well, we need to have proof of identity. I said, but you know who I am. I said, we actually drink in the same pub. You know, you know who I am. You've just called me Mr Banks. We've just had a laugh. She said, I'm sorry, we can't accept this cheque. I didn't want to take any out. I wanted to put some in, right? We can't accept your cheque. Who oh, pays cheques you... anyway, before we carry on with this conversation? Where do you get a cheque from? Who deals in cheques these days? It was somebody who bought a car off me, and it didn't bounce or anything. Oh, right. It was right. It was, no, he was like, you can still do cheques. Yeah, quite old-fashioned, isn't he? Oh, dear, old. Oh, I haven't got that pockets full of them. This was a one-off cheque. Oh. Yeah, but why weren't, that's a very good point if you think it, why weren't they checking out who he was? Who was paying out the cheques? Not me, who they knew, who was trying to put it in the yeah, bank. Yeah, yeah. It's gone madness. completely over yeah, the top. Madness. Now you've got to go around and knock on the front door, say, "Look, it's me." Yeah, things like that. Yeah, crazy, but crazy. Eight banks. Well, yes, and he should know. Um, <laughs> well, I we, did have an uncle called Robin. I really, really, <laughs> no, you did. I did. I did. Yeah. A classic. Well, my dear wife had a dear friend at, at school and, and she was called Plum and they'd named her Victoria. <laughs> oh, what did you do about that? That's just as bad. <laughs> yes, we must move on. Mm. Uh, listen, Yorkshire Cricket Club yeah. have come in for a lot of mm. stern criticism. Uh, now, they've all <coughs> just had this, um, as we've mentioned before, uh, this rule about you've got to be a Yorkshireman to be a member of the Yorkshire mm. Cricket Club to play, I mean. Um, and now they appear to be um, willfully stopping a uh, big Pakistani community, lots of mm. very good cricketers, one has to say, mm. uh, in Yorkshire. And they've been accused um, of being racially active against various people. Now, you, you drill down and find out what's behind this. Uh, there's another Pakistani guy come along uh, and he's got a big reward off the Yorkshire Cricket Club. I think uh, I may go there and because of my, oh no, it's Indian distant heritage. No, they wouldn't like me, would they? I was gonna say I'll volunteer to say something and, we, and get some money. But we think, because we've been in Spain most of our lives actually, and um, there is, uh, and we're talking about the short form of Pakistan. Mm. Now I should be able to say what they're called. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, in Spain, if you're resident, as we have been in the past, we're now resident in Portugal, um, but we still live in both countries, they call us giris. Like the Americans will call, you're a limey. Mm. Uh, giris a bit more derogatory than that, actually. Mm. But mm. they call us giris. Okay, get over it. Mm. So why should we not call in Britain, who are we hurting? Or have people politically got hold of these names? You can't say that. <clears throat> You're going to be taken to court. Mm. We're oversensitive in Britain. Oh, wait, well, no, I don't know. Uh, yeah, um, the, the argument is, is that if you, if you listen to sort of gangster rap for whatever, uh, yeah. No, it's, no, it's not what somebody is. Is, is, this, but, is this Bob Dylan? No, and it's not some thug in Marbella getting put in jail. Gangsta rap, it's like... Yeah, yeah. Um, it's... It, it's it, they use derogatory terms to insult uh, and uh, just jovially attack each other. And if you watch a lot of cinema... 
uh, and DVDs particularly at the moment, not DVDs, sorry, Netflix and things like that. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, racial abuse is part of the passoire of uh, society throughout the world. Um, it's just the way, way we are. It's just the way people are. Is it acceptable as, um, uh, as a form of uh, way of addressing people? Uh, I, I don't really know. I, I think not, if the people... No, well, dressed. listen, I agree with you. Yeah. We've got to state this, that we don't like it. No. You don't like being called a giri. Um, yeah. But yeah. That, that's it. We, we go on and we say, next... Uh, in Spain, there is another phrase, male de cordas. In other mm. words, the Spanish, to people who talk to you badly, are badly yeah. educated, yeah. male de cordas. Yeah, yeah. So and we call them thick. Yeah. yeah, so move on. There's no difference between calling them thick as calling them a, a giri. No, no. Well, this is what I'm saying. We've gone over the top in no, Britain. Move yeah. on and get no. your other social no, things no, going. No, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. If somebody in a bar uh, calls you a giri, Mm. That's different than somebody in, uh, give me the name of a football team in Spain. In, in Spain, we'll try Real Madrid. Re All right. Somebody Real who, Madrid. Yeah, somebody in, who works for or plays for Real Madrid uh, using that same phraseology to you. Because they are people who are in the public eye, who represent a staid form of society and have a, a way of earning money out of their position in life and have an influence over other people within society. Some little, ugly, little, toothless, drunken person in a bar uh, using a racist remark is not the same as some multi-millionaire uh, person in a position of authority and influence using that same remark. Now it's it, there is a difference in the structures and uh, the structures and the stratas of society where people who've moved into a different strata have a responsibility towards what's going on. Yeah, I, I, if um, if like for instance, this and this is a true thing. Most racists will always begin what their 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 racist views by saying, "I'm not a racist, but." And then they go off on a racist rant. Now, if you say, I was only being friendly, hey, hey, I was only joking when I called you that word, hey, hey, like that, it's almost the same thing. Because maybe I didn't want to call that I, word. I would love to agree with you, Lee. Mm. And we're all getting on, but we live in the, the, the real world. Where do you set the bar? Do you set the bar mm. if that person's black, or if he's Asian, yeah. or if he's Chinese? Where'd you set the bar? You got them all wrong then. The Chinese are the smallest and the Asians oh, yeah, are the tallest. Yeah, I never thought yeah. about that. <laughs> I suppose well, that's racist, isn't it? Well, yes, of course it is. That's what I'm saying. Who decides what the cultural taste of the moment is? Yeah. You can't put people in prison. Mm. You can't sack them, which can't is going on at the them. moment. Uh, exactly. Mm. I mean, mm. what do you do? It's, it's down to that wonderful four-letter word, beginning with W. Yeah. It's woke. I'm mm. sick of woke. And we've got to stop. But you've got to have a barrier somewhere. There's got to be a barrier well, somewhere. No, well, yeah, justice weighs one against and the other. And that's what happened. The no, cricket club doesn't. was taken, was treated to common justice. There is. And was found out that it, that was, so the barrier was set The by. judicial system is full of wokes. That's the problem. I'm talking about wokes and talking about the Wicked Witch of the Full North. of loads of men wearing wigs and dresses. Well, there you go. Yeah. You, you, uh, be careful. Ooh. LGBT, <laughs> don't forget. Let's LGBT. talk about... LGBT, me. LGBT, yeah. Let's talk about the lovely Jacinta. Who's she? Well, she's head bot of, of New Zealand. Oh, I, uh, and, yeah. And uh, Jacinta is, well, I'm sorry, she's so over the top, and it's happened again. There's some wonderful footage, and I'll get hold of it for you, just so yeah, that you can see. I won't even put it on the channel, I yeah. daren't. <laughs> and talk about PR. You, as the best PR man in the business, mm -hmm. 
he could get a lovely job down in New Zealand with Jacinta. Yeah. Because they showed this picture of her doing a piece to camera about some, from home, because she wouldn't go out and catch COVID. Not that there is any down there. She shuts everything down as soon as one person gets mm. COVID. The whole country shuts mm. down. Exactly, yeah. Crackers. And it's a setup. And she's talking to camera, just like that. And she's saying, blah, blah, blah. And then her little three-year-old son comes off camera and she's talking to him because she wants to appear. <laughs> oh, this has just happened. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's absolutely grisly yeah. in the extreme. But this is what politicians do. Mm. They don't want the truth out there. They just want to be re-elected yeah. the next time. Uh, so there we are, Jacinta, um, before you get another job, because I don't think you're getting next time uh, because you've been sussed. Um, let's have a bit of reality and a bit of truthfulness. Talking about truthfulness and adjuncts to this is that I found the perfect job for the perfect PR man. It's in Canada. Where else? If there's something worse than Jacinta, it's our friend uh, Justin Trudeau uh, in Canada. And Ooh. do you know what he's done? I bet you don't even know this, mate. But I do. Right? Go on. You can get a job in Canada. Can I? Yes. As a registered uh, press man, uh -huh. journalist, yeah. and there is big money for you. How much? Half your wages as a conventional journalist, let's say that's $50,000. Right. The government are now going to pay all the newspapers, television stations, but especially newspapers, half the wages of the journalists. That's what he's done. Why? Because he wants them to, they all are now, uh, very pro, uh, yeah, his yeah. party. Yeah, yeah. And he knows he's got them by the handcuffs or something. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, you're you, yeah. you, you pinko. Yeah. Good journalist. <laughs> it's there waiting for you. Half your wage to pay. Well, I'd, I'd, yeah, you see, I, I was dealing with um, a chap called Curtis. I'm sorry, Curtis, I've forgotten your last name. Uh, when, I, when, when I was a drinking man, I remembered everybody's names in my own <laughs> mind. Uh, but, Not true. Yeah. But this chap, Curtis, works on a works in Richmond. Wherever that is, in Virginia. America. Yeah, that'll, that'll do, yeah. Uh, works in Richmond, Virginia. Not Surrey. Not Surrey, no, not Surrey. Yeah, that's the, the one with the fringe. Top, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and he, he uh, is a freelance journalist, very good. He does a radio show, very similar to me, actually, although I don't do radio shows anymore. Uh, but works, does radio shows, does uh, freelance writing, writes on music. He is freelance. And what's happening now, this is what uh, old Justin seems to have just about forgot, is that the world is now filled with uh, freelance journalists who don't need 50% of the wage paid by him. They can still go out and actually broadcast and publish and write about and find venues in the world which will go against the party line. And in so many ways... That is part of what is exciting about being a real, not pretend like Nigel Farage, journalist, right? A real journalist. Say Nigel, addressing by his correct name. What's he called, Richard? Dick. Well, <laughs> you would call him that. <laughs> but we, 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 listen, we've got to go. Oh, I, I can't resist one more oh, thing. Go on, to go out being annoyed, but th this is a special occasion. Uh, the special occasion is we, we're having to move to Portugal because he's staying here for a few more weeks. So we're going to Portugal. We're going to Portugal with you. You oh, don't know yet. Yeah. Not told me. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Another wrong move. Anyway, uh, YouTube are in trouble, we're, we're. Uh, certainly from our perspective, continually. Um, there was a certain English MP um, stabbed to death in the most cruel manner um, fortnight ago. Mm. Um, there was Mr. George Floyd in America, uh, cruelly killed by that police officer. Uh, the difference is quite startling. Um, Mr. Floyd had a, 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 a terrible criminal record and things are coming out now that are not very good. 
Um, the British MP uh, has got a faultless record. Why, do I ask myself, are footballers supporting BLM and in many parts of the world, but especially in Britain, why don't they support Britain and call out what's happening in Britain and not what's happening three and a half thousand miles away in the States continually? Stop bending the knee. You're daft. Well, it's, it's just that, you know, everybody's got a right to... You see, the beauty about Britain, and I don't miss Britain in many ways, but what I do miss about Britain is its general... Uh, it's, it's connection and its desire to be a state of freedom and uh, to allow people to have freedom of speech, to allow people to have freedom of expression. And the basic constitution of uh, Britain is that that's what we get and that's what these people are operating. Now, George Floyd wasn't a good boy, he wasn't a dreadful boy, he had a bit, he didn't have a horrendous, uh, he didn't murder anybody, he didn't uh, set any countries on fire, he didn't steal anything, he, did, he, he didn't... Oh, I think yeah. he, he's, yeah. yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't, well, well it depends, I mean, he, he it depends if you read or look at uh, uh, proper news channels or you read... Yeah, uh, you don't mean that, CNN and the... Yeah, yeah, oh my yeah. idiot! You can always get you can always get disinformation off the two best news people you want to watch if you want disinformation are Nigel Farage and Donald Trump, and so the both rest... of whom are going to come back big time. Surely, <laughs> watch this back. We've got to go. It's nice when I can cut him off like this and go and flee to Portugal. <laughs> yeah, good boy. But we'll see you shortly. We can still zoom. Mm. And um, no, we're coming with you. Um, yeah. <laughs> how nice that is! Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Yeah.